All right, let's uh, start exploring uh, another feature of uh, some of the product dog waffles. Um, this is going to be focusing on gradients. And uh, in this particular case here, I'm using gradients to add a little bit of perspective to a scene. All right, so uh, what you notice here, there's sort of a bluish tint in the far area, closer to the horizon, and a bit more of a reddish tint. And then I paint it on top, and if I undo the most recent ones, there you go, that was before I painted on top. Uh, there's also the undo stack here, the undo browser now in version 10. Um, click that and you'll see the, the past images. You see the preview here. Uh, you can take any of these images, even if you cropped and have them at different sizes. You can store a copy of that so you have a snapshot. And that you can then go and create a new image, this one here, uh, replace existing image. And that will uh, allow you to restore even something that's a different size after cropping. Uh, but uh, that's not what I did here. What I wanted to do is uh, show how to add a bit more perspective to that. Because you see that uh, it's kind of lighter in the back there. And I'll show how I did that. Uh, then it's kind of a medium level grayish or, or you know, like not, not as saturated, not as white as in the back or as in the front. And then uh, a bit more saturated in the front and darker as well. Um, but I wanted to add a bit more of the, the perspective impression by adding a, a tinting to that. And typically when you think about uh, things that are at the far distance, if they are disappearing uh, towards the horizon into the fog or into the mist or into the bluish sky, they, they tend to be a bit more uh, cold appearing uh, bluish, uh, bluish tint and then a bit more reddish for the stuff that's nearby. And so <clears throat> what you what you would want to do is work with a gradient that allows you to, to multiply or to tint the colors uh, with something that's kind of a bluish tint in the back and a reddish tint in the front. Um, so now how did I uh, create this image in the first place? Let's, let's go and have a look. I, I used the particle brushes and you see here I have them pinned down. And in fact, I went to the foliage category and in the foliage, when you look under loads, there are some presets now that are called perpetual. You scroll down somewhere in the middle here and you'll see perpetual one, two, three. Let's take perpetual three. And as you paint one, you'll see that one here. Actually, I don't like that one. Let's get a different one. Let's see perpetual four. That's even thinner. Let's see perpetual. Maybe I had one of the earlier ones here, perpetual one. That was not it, but okay, it will do. Uh, what I want to do is show, first of all, you can change the scale a little bit. You can change the pen size and make some adjustments that way. But the thing is, it keeps painting. Now, if we call it perpetual. It's not really going to be perpetual, but it keeps going for a long time, right? Maybe if you keep going for a minute, you will start uh, reaching the end of it. All right, so what I did is I, I focused first on the upper parts that are going to have to be very dim. And so I paint those a little bit, just kind of going from one side and maybe back and then let go. And then I use the interactive undo, which is up here next to the history stack. Um, interactive undo is the same thing as the f brush, uh, no, uh, filter fade last action, right? Except that fade last action goes from left to right, right? Whereas interactive undo goes from right to left, right? It's an undo. Um, and what you do is you say, okay, let's go about 25% or something like that, right? Then you do another brush a little bit closer, another brush stroke, something like this, right? And then that one too, you can go to maybe 40%, something like that. So you see it's a little bit um, darker now, right? And now we can uh, focus on what's kind of in the middle here and perhaps bring it up here a little bit, get a little bit of overlap. There you go, and undo this one. Something like this. So now we should be around 40, 50, 50 or 60%. And then keep going with some more here. And at this point, we're almost fully saturated, but still on, uh, maybe 80% or something like that. And so now we have the bottom part here, which we will have at full saturation. And in fact, we can draw a second one on top of that and it will combine the shading because we have this thing here, the shadows that will produce some 
um, some self-shading, uh, ambient occlusion. Um, one thing we can also do is brighten this a little bit. There's the light. Make him a little bit lighter. And uh, yeah, the shading is certainly going to dampen that a little bit. Um, so anyway, so, so we have a scene now where it's going from very light in the back to fairly dark up close. And I want to add uh, a little bit more perspective to that. First thing I'll do, of course, is I'll store this image because that's a milestone reached. Uh, there you go. And so now what I'd like to do is add a gradient. So when you go to the gradients, you can find the gradient tool in a couple of places. First of all, I mean, the gradient selector, you have the flood fill, right? There is gradients to choose from here. These are presets. If you don't want to use those, if you want to uh, make your own, I would recommend the gradient editor or this one here, my favorite, the sweep editor. And with the sweep editor, you can go and you see I actually created a gradient already. Um, so I'm going to go with the, the red value going from high to low and the green value kind of staying flat or maybe going up a little bit and then coming back down. And then the blue value, that one goes from low to high. That's the key thing. So we're adding blue, something like this. And we're adding perhaps a little bit green also something like that uh, and then we have some red and we could go either kind of fall off or we could like go like this all right something like that uh, if you see some little quirks here or there like these um, what you can do is you can smooth this out uh, this one here press and hold it with the watch time watch there uh, time clock <laughs> you can uh, smooth this out a little bit and so now we have a gradient that uh, we can uh, slap uh, across the entire image here. So um, you, you see this tool from the fourth one down, the fifth one down, you have the gradient, lens flares, so right click on that and you'll see there's a circular gradient. There's, let's use the first one here, the linear gradient tool. Now by default, it's going to uh, not do this. <laughs> by default, it's going to replace it because I have already changed the mode here, right? By default, it's in opaque mode, so it would go something like this. It would just replace and this is beautiful, of course, to create uh, horizons, uh, skies, um, you know, all sorts of um, space or, or skies uh, backgrounds. But uh, what we are really interested in is to apply it on top of this. So let me undo back to, yep, there was this one here. Yep, that's why we store it. Um, so now I can go and multiply that. So I need to go set the mode for the gradient tool into something different than opaque. I have to uh, try, the, for instance, additive. Uh, that might be interesting too, but it will lighten it up, of course. And it may also be too much, too much red. So now we use the interactive undo again. Right. Get into the habit of, of thinking about, oh, I can fix it later, right? <laughs> I, can, I can undo, it's too much of it. It's the right way, but there'll be too much of it. So you can use the interactive undo to do this. Uh, another thing you could do is, um, let's, let's go back to the original here. Uh, you could say, instead of the additive mode, uh, let's use the multiply mode. Let's see what that looks like. Now that goes dark up here really fast in the back there. And that might be just a little bit too much. But again, we have the interactive undo and see if we can get that. So that might help if we want to add a little bit of that bluish tint uh, all the way in the sky, the, the foggy bluish look here. Um, and so that's very subtle. It's already so dark here that multiplying red to it is not going to make it much reddish. Uh, that's the thing about multiply mode. If you have a very blackish uh, pixel, it's going to stay dark. Um, what we might want to do is try some others, like the screen mode. Let's see that. Okay. Um, so that one, yeah, that, that could be a candidate. Let's go do some interactive undo again. There you go. It's very subtle, right? You don't want to overdo it, but you want to do a tiny little bit of that. And that's what's going to add to it. Um, and, you know, once you're done with it, I mean, there's a couple of other modes to try. You may want to see uh, greater than, less than. Um, those are probably going to be the ones. Let's say multiply and screen and perhaps additive or some of these might be the ones um, to 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 work with. Look at that. You can have <coughs> the the shrubbery in the back there totally disappear. It seems 
almost working like a threshold, a spatial threshold. And again, use the interactive undo. So you can still see it a little bit there. Um, so, and then now, of course, to add even more depth to that or or impression of perspective, one thing you could do then is re-enable the uh, particle settings and paint one more on top here that will stay crisp and uh, really appear up close in front of this background. But that's uh, up to you as to what else you want to do with that picture. Um, you can also add some other effects such as the filter here for um, what's it called, the stylized, the lighting tool. Now the lighting tool usually will be used if you want to have sort of an embossed appearance. But you can, uh, you can change the amount of, uh, like the multiply original here and have a, a, an interesting set of additional lighting um, appear on that. You could uh, have it uh, perhaps up there like this, reduce the amount of embossing and then even um, make it just very, you know, get rid of the fine details. So all sorts of alternates there to experiment with. Um, and that in itself will add a little bit of perspective. And once again, we can use the interactive undo to say, okay, that was good, that was good, but somewhere in between is best, right? You want to have a, a middle ground between the two. So <clears throat> that's a, a quick one on one way to use gradients is to add a bit of perspective in, t in the sense of uh, uh, atmospheric perspective, right? Where the atmosphere adds sort of a bluish whitish tint towards the back and uh, a reddish tint towards the uh, pieces that are up close uh, nearby. All right, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.